Here we will show how the monolithic Hanan Pacha and the cellular Urun Pacha show the process of vitrification in the shine seen on the surface of the stone. It is unlike the shine produced as a result of the erosion of a busy thoroughfare or any other well-used stone structure. Vitrification implies a molecular change in the structure of the stone caused by high temperatures which transform the naturally rough surface of the rock to form a bright and shiny finish such as that found in the interior of the site known as Amaru Machai. This molecular modification caused by temperatures produces a skin or surface layer on the rock. This can be seen in some damaged vitrified stones where a thin, even layer can be discerned across the vitrified surface. The presence of this stone skin is undeniable and in ancient times it would have covered the whole piece. During both Hanan Pacha and Urun Pacha, vitrification was used to lend the stonework cohesion, strength and precision. A special process of vitrification was used in the borders of stone blocks of the Urun Pacha. The greatest expression of Urun Pacha, known today as Saksai Huaman, was formed in the same way, regardless of its great size and rough surface. The nocturnal illumination of the monument reveals the presence of the vitrified borders. The combined use of molding and heat have given the rough stone a mirror-like finish. The use of molding and heat have given the surface of the stone its metallic sheen. This shine and special texture covers the area originally covered by the mold. Beyond the area covered by the mold, the stone retains its natural texture. The knowledge of vitrification implied by the cultures of Hanan Pacha and Urun Pacha has a special importance. It allows precise and incontrovertible archaeological and historical conclusions to be drawn. For example, applying this knowledge, we can establish with precision the historical reality of Loreto Street in Cusco which has been attributed to the architecture of the Incas. The two walls which form Loreto were assumed to have been manufactured by the same constructors, namely the Incas. But on closer analysis, this proves not to have been the case. Using what Alfredo Gamara called the flashlight test, we can verify the existence of a wall from the Inca Ukun Pacha, built using hammer and chisel. The same test on the facing wall shows the patina formed by vitrification associated with the pre-Inca Urun Pacha culture. Seen together, the differences in technology are apparent, although the two styles are similar. 
In the pre-Inca wall of Urumpacha, one can find these stones, which have been manipulated with molds and vitrification, to be recognized by day and by night. During the making of this film, the Inca wall of this street underwent a restoration process, which was applied to 80% of the wall. The pre-Inca side of the street, having been vitrified, needed no restoration work whatsoever. The characteristics corresponding to the Hanan Pacha culture, to use massable stone, use of molding and heat, and with a style of rounded internal corners, not only exist in Peru. They are to be found on all continents, at the most sacred places.